stop buying X3 CPUs for Star Citizen. As you can see, the 7700X without any 3D cache beat the 7000 X3D in Star Citizen when both CPUs are fully tuned. So I got the 7700X because I saw a video by 10 pound 42 reviewing it and it was very similar in performance to the 7800X3D with 6000 megahertz at CL36. And all I knew was that this CPU needed a max overclock and tuned memory to beat the so-called 3D cache king. But to my surprise, Price. It even beats the 7800X when it's also fully tuned. So let's take the 7700X and put it through the test. We are testing the CPUs in the latest Star System patch 3.21. And each CPU will be running at plug and play settings, which is the default settings you get when you build your PC for the first time without entering the BIOS, or if you recently just installed a CPU and did not adjust the Expo settings in the BIOS. The second settings is the Expo settings. These are the settings you would get when you buy a memory stick and set it at the rated settings. Finally, both CPUs got the exact same memory tune of 6400 MHz, seal 30. In addition, each CPU got their own max CPU overclock. For each run, we did 5 tests and took the results based on the average. At max settings, both CPUs used the exact same motherboard and did a 5 with ADI from Team Group. See in the description below for both the settings and test setup. Starting with the most demanding city in Star Citizen, Lorville, out of the box and with Expo, the 7800X3D is marginally better than the 7700X. As expected, once tuned, the 7700X takes the lead and beats beats the 7800X 3D. It's arguably tied in the average, but it's clearly much smoother with an 8% higher FPS and 1% low, giving an overall smoother Star Citizen experience. And what we're seeing here is a clear example of the 96 megabyte vCache not being big enough for Lowbridge's complexity. But even though the 7700X beats the 3D cache version, the 3D cache actually prints a higher 5% max average, as seen in the max FPS. This high FPS is actually noticeable in certain areas. The performance benefits of the non-3D version can be attributed to lower latency as the tuned version has roughly 4 nanoseconds lower latency and 0.5 gigahertz higher clock frequency than the 3D cache. Moving to area 18, a similar story, the 7800X3D with 6000 megahertz is 25% faster on average. But once we overclock and tune the 7700X with its lower latency, it completely takes over. With a massive 28% better 1% low and a 25% improvement on the average, the 7700X takes the lead. Revealing the 5% max average, we can see that the X3D version does print insane high FPS, and this is due to certain areas hitting fully the cache. From a smoothness perspective, 7700X does feel better due to the 1% lows, and actually reminds me of the 1300K with DDR5 at 8200. And we will take a look at that in the next video, how it performs against the 7700X. Taking a look at Orison, the story is similar. We have the 7800X3D out of the box and with Expo timings, completely destroying the 7700X. But once you tune it, you get that juicy stable 5.5 5 gigahertz and 6400 megahertz. It actually beats it with a 10% margin on the 1% low where it really matters. Revealing the max FPS, once again, you're getting those high end FPS, which most people will be flexing and showing why the 7800X3 is better. You do not feel the max FPS and you do not feel the averages, you feel the 1% low. And this is why I felt and experienced the 7700X performing better than the 7800X3D. So, if we take all of the results of the 7700X, it feels much smoother, has less stutters, and is cheaper than the 7800X when they're both maxed out. So, if you're building a new rig now, do not get the 7800X if you want to mid-max for Star Citizen. Get the 7700X paired with ADI memory sticks, get a affordable B650 motherboard, and you will have the most perfect setup for Star Citizen. This setup is also future-proof Zen 5, and if Zen 5 improves the 
the memory controller, I can clock higher memory frequencies, uh, 6400 MHz with one-to-one -one, uh, ratios, then this ADI will be able to meet any Zen 5 demands, even up to 8000 MHz. So you will not feel like you're missing out on any upgrade paths on the AM5 platform. In the next video, we are going to compare the 7700X against the fully tuned 1300K with 8200 memory speeds. I'm going to do this in the latest patch 3.21. And remember, the only thing unoptimized is your PC. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to thank Chris Roberts for an amazing CitizenCon. <laughs>